Welcome back to another episode of Natal. It's been a little while since the last one. In fact, I've been pretty busy working on some extra videos that you probably already saw if you're subscribed to the official City Skylines channel. I've been doing some uh, collaboration videos uh, on, on, on mods primarily. If you haven't seen them, I, I did one uh, that, uh, well, just it's like a get started guide on on how to you know start adding mods uh, to your game for the first time if you don't know how to do that uh, then i did another one on how to troubleshoot <laughs> potential errors and problems whenever those occur and the one that was released this morning at the time of this recording is uh, on how to keep your mods and assets organized so if you haven't seen them i'm going to include links in the description so you can check them out and uh, there's some idle cinematics there as well, if, you, if you're interested in seeing more of that. Uh, and in this episode, well, we're going to be working on the marina, which is uh, a project that has been long uh, awaited by many. There's been so many comments about this project. And this is something that I've been wanting to tackle for a while, but it, as you can see, it's pretty massive. It's like I was trying to measure this looking at the city and, you know, the the footprint that this is going to occupy. And I would say it's probably like a good 15 to 20 percent in terms of the overall size of this um, of this city. Needless to say, we're not going to finish this in this episode. I'm uh, I'm afraid um, we're going to get it to, to where it looks like mostly polished, but obviously it's going to lack actual details, and obviously it's not going to have any boats. Uh, I think I'm just going to end up the episode with like a one like a placeholder boat of some kind. So uh, yeah, we're going to be working on this for. At least one more episode, maybe even two more. So we'll, we'll see. But uh, with every other water related project that I do, I tend to, well, it's just so much easier to like empty everything out and work on dry land. And uh, even though eventually and every once in a while, you're probably going to see that we have uh, waves of, uh, of water sort of <laughs> getting into the city. Uh, you probably already saw a couple, but uh, as I move some of these uh, levees around, you're gonna see, you see, for example, that one over there. That one's gonna flood part of the city. Honestly, that's really not a big deal. Uh, all of the, um, I think I have like one or two mods that basically make it so that I don't have to worry about the city flooding. Uh, for the most part, I think cars just stop, you know, for for a little bit when when there's water on the road. But aside from that, there's really no true downside to um to the city being just covered in water besides just looking a little bit cool um and there's also a little bit of leakage i guess on that uh, stream to the right of the screen that's now gone but you'll probably see it uh, again when i move the camera around i try to like build these uh levees uh, like i said with the terraforming networks but uh they're not you know, waterproof water sort of still uh, flows from underneath the dirt because there's so many like conflicting networks there. Um, there is a, a little bit of trial and error actually in, in terms of uh, my use of networks in this episode. And I'll probably talk about more in detail in just uh, in just a second. But um, you know what I'm, what I'm doing here, and this is sort of like the core, well, not the core, that's probably not the right word, but like one of my biggest uh, concerns when I'm doing uh, Belts on on the side of the water, just on on the on the uh, shoreline, is trying to meet the shoreline as close to the uh, the well the level of uh, or the sidewalks or whatever's actually on the on the shoreline. Meaning that I don't want to have like a giant cliff. I see this all the time on screenshots on Reddit and other places like that where people just have this little uh, ferry terminal and then there's just like a drop like a grand canyon sort of drop and the boat is just like floating down below um it is uh, it is obviously hard if you're not uh, if you're not using mods to to meet uh the to, to have the, the water on the edge of the uh, of the line to meet at a much more graceful uh, height but it is possible and uh since i've been doing that ever since i started night all as you can see the water line here kind of meets the edge of that wall so I was uh, able to use that as a, sort of a template or a pre-made measurement uh, to sort of gauge everything else. And once I let the water in, and you're going to see this in a couple of minutes, I, I was just able to make everything magically, uh, well, meet at a much more reasonable uh, level. There's a m super loud street cleaning truck. 
just driving by my window. Do not mind that. This is the second one today. I don't understand. And also, like, they drove by yesterday, so I don't really know what's going on. And you're gonna hear in, in, in another few seconds coming uh, on the way on the way back. Great, that's that. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Um, in any case, <laughs> I started. Um, like I said at the beginning, I, I put together those, uh, or I used those uh, terraforming networks to create these like levees, in uh, in the hopes of containing the water between the the inner part of the marina, but. Uh, you're gonna see here that I've been like sort of struggling with uh, getting everything. Well, I wanted things to be a little bit narrow. I didn't want like super wide uh, jetties on on the side. So if I if I use terraforming networks, obviously when you do that, you just get all the basically a perfect slope on the edges for for the terrain that that is just very hard to deal with. You end up having to add extra networks to sort of curve it in place and uh, just to make it as narrow as possible. And then you end up with the, uh, you know, the classic little glitch where you see like the jagged edges. And if you have a road nearby, then you also end up with those nasty shadows. As, uh, this is a, actually a perfect example of what's happening on the screen. I tried having these like super narrow roads, but then you end up with the dirt on the side. And it was just like, hmm, man, I wonder if there's a better way. So what I ended up settling with is just, uh, well, straight up, not using uh, any any networks for this, or at least not in part. I did keep uh, some of the levees on the edges of the um, of the jetty here, but mostly in the areas where I wanted uh, just rocks to be exposed. You probably saw in the thumbnail that there's sections of this uh, of these jetties that have some rocks, sort of uh, keeping everything together, especially in the areas where I would I thought the water would cause a bit more erosion. Oh yes. I actually, I actually spent quite a bit of time figuring out how the currents of these two rivers that are kind of merging here in the middle would, you know, affect each other. Like, obviously, I'm not like a ocean like sea scientist. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know how to call them, uh, like oceanographic like expert by any means. But uh, I figured that two rivers kind of merging on the middle uh, would cause like some like different types of currents that would potentially make it hazardous for for you know for boats so i did my best to i guess fake it in a way that uh, this jetties look a little bit more believable if there was in fact strong currents affecting uh, the way you know boats would uh yeah you know, will, will be affected by 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 the currents keep yeah that's kind of what I meant. I don't know if that made any sense, but uh, as you can see here, I'm using this uh, uh, terraforming network as a levee on one of the sides of the of the marina, and then it kind of like merges gracefully with the straight up wall that's just a network. So because the water is just going to be sitting across the entire marina, like the actual water physics, um, I I kind of gave up on on having separate. Uh, <laughs> separate like pools between you know the rivers the ocean and the inside of the marina so it's all kind of connected underneath but it looks like it's not in fact um this is a very subtle thing but in the before and after at the end of the episode you probably you're probably gonna see well i mean now that i'm telling you you should pay attention that um the water compared to where it looked before was a little bit more choppy more wavy and now it's a bit more contained i think it has to do with the fact that i also put um like a breakwater jetty up, like outside of the marina, right in the middle of the ocean. You're gonna see that in just a second, as I well as I finish the two main walls and then add the third one, which is pretty common in uh, in most marinas, at least the ones that I've been looking at on Google Maps. They just have this uh, farther wall in the middle of the ocean that sort of breaks the biggest. Uh, well, the biggest impact from the ocean itself, which I'm guessing has a bit more forge than the two rivers adjacent uh, to the city. In any case, um, as I finalize this uh, edge wall, I'm trying to like figure out what the best way to transition from the key to the custom made jetty is going to be like. Uh, I didn't quite finish that. I kind of left it as you saw it a second ago, but I think I'm going to come back in uh, a later episode and, and take a look at that. But pretty much all that's left to do is to let the water in. And this is like probably the most exciting part because you just uh, 
see everything kind of shape up magically uh, as the water sort of rushes in and makes everything look a little bit nicer. I did some terraforming also as well, just to make sure that the water would flow the way I wanted to flow. So I kind of made some like very shallow trenches uh, at the bottom of uh, of the rivers. So you're probably gonna see that in a couple of minutes as I, as I do it, but man, that, that is looking nice. And that uh, edge wall, sorry, that uh, rocky jetty at the, at the entrance of the marina, right in the middle of the ocean, also helps quite a bit with the, um, with the you know, keeping the, the water sort of stable and and not too wavy inside of it. And uh, if you're gonna try to have your uh, your shoreline meet the water level as close as possible, you definitely need to let it sink for for quite a bit. Um, as you can see, we started uh, when, when I let the water in; it was still kind of flooding the edges. But as I like stopped touching things and, and let the water do its thing, uh, the water level slowly goes down. And then at that point, you can just go in with move it and make it so that it like the, you know, obviously the water's gonna go up and down, but you definitely wanna wait until it's like the perfect sweet spot where where things look look good. Every time I, you do changes like the one I'm, I'm doing now where I just add more terraforming networks and suddenly um, I'm getting rid of, uh, of terrain that then it's gonna be occupied by water, that's gonna cause fluctuations in the water that uh, obviously will alter the, the sea level. So the more you do it, uh, the more I guess you'll have to, or every time you do it, you'll have to wait until the water settles and then you do your measurements. But if you did them once and you haven't like really changed anything dramatically, you could just uh, wait it out. Eventually it's gonna, the water's gonna settle down and it's not gonna flood your, um, your shoreline. Now, one of the things that I've been, that I always struggle to do is these like rocky jetties because there's no way to get them to be really narrow, especially when you use uh, terraform networks, uh, terraforming networks, I say like this. They're usually pretty wide. I think I have an idea on how to maybe shrink that down just slightly by putting an adjacent uh, uh, road network just below water so that it kind of, uh, shrinks the uh, the edges a little bit. But honestly, as I was looking at the cinematics when I put this video together, I think I'm, I'm actually quite happy with how this looks. I'm, I'm using a combination of uh, Runix's uh, river rocks and my own breakwater rocks that I put together for Sinu forever ago, which is kind of fascinating. Uh, that That's still like a pretty decent asset, <laughs> if I do say so myself, or at least it's useful um, after, after all these years. And uh, obviously it comes with like a combination of wet and dry so that you're supposed to use the wet one on the very edge of the water. That way it just looks a little bit more, you know, like it has uh, algae um, and uh, it's exposed when the, when the tide is down and vice versa. And uh, just to add a bit more detail here, I added these like uh, landing, uh, uh, I don't know what, what you call them, like just ramps. I think they're called like boat landings. I was gonna say landing pad, but that's like a different, that, that's something else. <laughs> um, but uh, just uh, combining these uh, docks, dock pieces and, and the stairs and um, just these like uh, segments of wall just to keep everything uh, looking nice and not having to use the same uh, graphic asset uh, all the time. I, I managed to achieve a design that I was actually pretty happy with. And uh, also uh, there's uh, that little corner that I don't know if you paid attention to that just a second ago. You're gonna see it in the cinematics, but that little uh, L-shape corner, you can see it on the top left corner of the screen. Never mind, it's gone. <laughs> um, it it doesn't quite align with the with the river that that uh, runs on the side. I think I'm gonna come back to that and have it uh, so that it's all like parallel and perfect. And on top of that, what I was thinking is that little corner would potentially be a uh, gas pump for, for boats. So we're probably gonna actually have a gas station inland for cars that's gonna have some kind of piping connected to the uh, the little dock there so that, um, well, that, that way that boats can actually get fuel because not all of them will be sailboats. In fact, many sailboats also have engines. So they need a place to, to refuel and that's, I think, a pretty good spot. Last but not least, I'm adding a little security gate 
to the area where you know boat owners would drive uh, to and, and get their boats in the water. Uh, I might actually come back to, to that because I'm not sure I love it. But uh, in any case, here's the long awaited before and after. And uh, oh man, I'm, I'm so excited. I think uh, I think this this whole area is going to turn out great once once we're actually finished with it. If you think that as well, please consider giving this video a like. And if you're new to a channel and haven't already, please subscribe as well. But that's all. Thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one.